Sadly, there's a bit of an epidemic online, and that epidemic is ugly graphics. And I have to admit, I'm partially responsible for the, contributing to the epidemic, and I suspect you might be as well. There are so many of us who are graphically challenged, who should just should not be given the opportunity to create and post a graphic on our own, left, left to our own devices. But that need not be a problem, because if we use Canva, to create our graphics, chances are we can create at least acceptable, probably very good graphics for free, even with limited ability. I will show you today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And we are going to take a look at Canva today. And in my opinion, Canva might be the best free tool available in the online world. It is an amazing graphics creation tool, graphics editor that has so much potential just as a free tool. Yes, there is a paid version. I actually subscribe to the paid version, but I will show you the features of the free version. Everything I'm gonna show you today is included in the free version of the software. Now, when you sign up for your free account in Canva, and there's a link down in the description for you to do so, you will see you'll be brought to this page here, which is a which is a dashboard page that will allow you to get started in the most effortless way within Canva. Now, there's some terrific tutorials available that Canva provides that will get you through the initial process, but you might pick up enough just from watching this video to get started. We have along the top, you've got your different menu features of all of the different things that Canva offers. And as you can see, even in the in the tutorials in the training area, there are uh, there's a wealth of a wealth of content available to you. Down the left-hand side, you've got a menu that allows you to navigate through the main areas of Canva. And through the center, we've got the ability to start creating graphics. Canva's all about creating graphics and the real basis of using Canva is working with templates, allowing a professional designer, somebody on Canva's team, to design the overall look of a graphic of an image and for you to take that image and you to recreate it in your for your own purpose, for your own needs. So taking templates and modifying them. You can do other projects within Canva as well. You can design logos, you could do eBooks, you could do little, little videos. There's a lot of different graphic things that you can do in Canva. But for our purposes today, we're gonna kind of stay in the railroad tracks with the most useful single thing Canva does. And that is to help us create some sort of a social shared graphic that doesn't suck. So how do we get going? Well, you can see here that we've got the ability to select from the kind of from this pre-populated menu, different media types. And, uh, and if you search in anything, if you wanna search in say an Instagram post, you can see that in the templates you'll get, you'll get lots of results from different searches. So all of the different types of templates that you create aren't reflected here on the desktop, but a lot of them are. The one that I'm gonna work with today that I'm gonna to use to show you is a YouTube thumbnail. The reason I wanna show you how to create a YouTube thumbnail is thumbnails are incredibly important. In YouTube, it's also the one type of graphic that I know quite a bit about having created hundreds, if not thousands of thumbnail images for my channel. And Canva has taken me from creating deeply ugly thumbnail images, case in point, Look at one of the early ones that I created myself in Photoshop. And why would you click on that graphic when you have Nick's graphic right above? It's just when I'm left to my own devices, I can really make it look pretty bad. But my thumbnails don't look that bad anymore, as is evidenced by the fact you're watching this video. So you obviously found the thumbnail image appealing enough to click on. And Canva is the reason that I've come this far. Now, when we go to create a new thumbnail image from a template, look at the first thing that Canva does is they actually help us out an awful lot here because they choose the right orientation and format for the graphic for that social platform. Every social platform, be it Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they've all got a preferred size uh, and uh, in pixel density uh, of graphics and Canva knows them. You don't have to look them up. You don't have to manually enter the dimensions of the graphic you're gonna to create to have the proper dimensions for the platform you're using. Canva takes that right out of the box and they create YouTube tube thumbnails, 1280 by 720, Bob's your uncle, off we go. So now let's get started. Let's create our thumbnail image for a video. And what Canva does now is it brings us in and gives us a canvas where we can do all of our layout, where we can add our elements and we can compose our image. Now we could start from scratch 
if we wanted to. And using these tools, these tools down the side, such as the different elements, we can bring different elements in. Little, uh, is that going to work for us? Yeah. We can add different types of text. We can add graphical elements. I don't know why this would be there, but we can add that graphical element. Uh, we can add photos that are public domain. We could create our own thumbnail image ourselves left to our own devices. And chances are it may suck quite a bit. Or even better, we can choose to start with a template. And this is what most of us are going to do. And these templates are not just for YouTube thumbnails, but every social graphic that you can think of, every book cover, every poster, they are there are pre-made templates that you can work from and you can take and use as a base and then modify them to suit your needs and be able to publish something that you're proud of that is fairly unique. One of the challenges with uh, using templates in the past was we could always tell where the templates were coming from. There was a limited number of tools that gave us templates. Not so anymore. These are uh, just some of the templates, some of the YouTube thumbnail templates that they provide to us. And there are thousands of these. Now, they all aren't free. They all aren't available to us for free. Uh, but many of them, many good quality ones are. See this one here? This one is available only if you have upgraded to the pro version. Now, if it's too much to go through this and to find a thumbnail that you want to start with because there's just you're overwhelmed by choice, you can start to narrow things down. You can search. I can do a search on just fitness-related thumbnails. And we see now that they have narrowed it down to ones that are just fitness-related. Uh, how about if we just narrow it down to ones that are tutorial in nature? So I type in tutorial, and here are thumbnails that are designed to support uh, the designed to for, for tutorial or training type videos. And when you find one that you like, that you want to work with, if it doesn't have the little crown next to it telling you that it's a premium one, you simply click on it and select it, and then it's loaded over onto your canvas, and now you can start to work with that image and create it and, and modify it to work best for you. So let's do that. Let's continue on, and let's take this, and let's turn it into something that I might be happy with. Okay, let's look at the different parts of this thumbnail image. We have a background. We've got a little splash of color here. We've got the text and a, a couple of background uh, images behind the text to make the text stand out. And we've got two photographs, uh, a photograph of the dude with the megaphone, which we're going to eliminate right away. Now, a side note is we talked about premium versus free. Now, even though this is in the free version of Canva, if I want to use this photo, I have to pay a licensing fee, usually 50 cents, a dollar, a dollar 50 to use this photo if I want to use this photo in my image. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I notice here, we see the watermark on this one as well. So this element is also something which Canva would end up charging us for, uh, but don't lose any sleep over it. We will replace it with something that's very usable and uh, it's still going to work for us. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to, after getting rid of that photo, is we're going to bring in a new photo of me because I'm the star of this video, I guess. And we can upload our own photos. Now, I have on my hard drive a collection of many, many photos that I've had taken, publicity photos that we've had taken just for this purpose. And the video and the photo that I'm going to upload right now has, is a, has the background removed already on it. So that's going to save me some time and some effort. In the free version of Canva, there are no tools for automatically removing the background. But in the pro version, it'll actually remove any background image so you can have a, a transparent photo uh, with the background cutaway if you choose to. But let's see if I can, I, I can't even tell which one, the ones, ones of these are. Let's just choose this photo kind of at random and let's see if it's going to work for us. We upload that photo and here it comes. There it is. Ah. Okay, it's not the best photo for, us, for this particular need. It's me with an iPad, but let's use it. Let's just imagine that this is a brilliant photo for our purposes. Now, in order to bring the photo in, I just take it from the upload bin here, drag it over, drop it into the drop it into the frame, and there it is ready to go. I can resize it. I can flip it. I look kind of confused at this point, uh, but we'll still make this one work for us. I'll make it even slightly larger. There we go. So now... We've got a photo that could be passable as far as we're concerned. And next, I want to talk about the text. I'm going to get rid of this little accent because we don't really need that accent. One of the things that I appreciate the most about Canva's templates is the text is the font that they choose. I don't know what strange alchemy graphic designers have, but I am unable to select appropriate fonts for anything I do. If I don't use a template, the fonts look disconnected 
from the content that I'm creating. But here, this font looks terrific for this type of content. So I, so kudos to them. They've chosen the font, and if we click here, we can see that it's actually Genty Sans. Who knew that? Uh, let's. But we're not going to. Obviously, we don't want to do video marketing. Instead, we're going to be doing a video on creating. Awesome graphics. So we could take this, we could change the size, we can change the orientation, we can spin them, we can change the color of the text if we choose to. Every piece of this is editable and it's still going to probably work even as we modify it slightly because the overall design is a good design. So that's the next thing that we can do is we can modify the text to get what exactly we want. And I might with this particular thing, because I'm very big on having big, uh, having big uh, text, making it very easy to read. So I might increase the size of all of these elements and reposition them. And so this at this point here is just kind of noodling around to get it exactly the way you want. This blue background, I like the blue. I don't hate that blue. There we go. And there we go. So that might be perfect. It might not, but you get the idea of how you can tweak things to make them work for you. A bigger tweak might be changing the color of the background. I click on the background and here I've got a color tab that will allow me to change the background color dramatically if I choose to. I'm not going to change the, that background color because I'm very happy with that, but I do think that maybe I want to add a little more weight to the bottom of this. So I'm going to change the color of this little graphic slash that we have here. By the way, how you go about creating a slash like that or a, a splash of color is you go into your elements, you just choose shapes like this, you set the shape up for what you want, you orient it the way you want, let's just do it this way here, you add a spin to it if you need, or you do whatever you want as far as that's concerned. Then you go in and you add a color to the, to the, whatever the, the element is that you want to use. You position it where you want, and that's not going to work like that. Let's do it this way here. Let's spin it completely that way. And then you position it where you want, and you've got a splash of color like that. Oh, but it's in front of the graphic? No worries. You can either take the element that's behind and bring it forward, or the element that's in front and push it backwards. So you can set up your layers within Canva to make sure that you have uh, surfaced the information that you want to have, and it's not hidden behind another graphic. So you can see there that we've changed the look of it. Let's get rid of those dots, because the dots aren't going to work for us anymore. Let's change this color to the blue here as well. And you know what? I do think that we are missing something by not having that little splash of orange color in the background. So let's see if we can replace that with something that's free. I don't want to pay for something. And look at this. I, I see this little swirl thing here. I like the swirl thing. Let's add that orange that we had. This is the orange here that was in it, wasn't it? And let's position that again behind my head here. Now, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I don't hate that. Do you hate that? I don't hate that. I think that's a graphic that could work. And look, I just created it in front of your very eyes, in front of my very eyes, in just a few moments, working from a template in Canva. Everything here, free. Now, once you've designed the graphic that you're happy with, you can then, and don't worry about saving it because Canva saves everything. So we've got it saved in a project so we can come back to it and we can modify it. If I want to make something that's close and similar, I just duplicate it. Now I've got two copies of it and I can change the text. I can change the graphic. I can use this same basic format for multiple graphics. But the other thing that we need to do is we need to get it out of Canva and into the platform of choice that we want to use. So we click under the sharing menu and there are some direct publishing options where you can publish it directly to social platforms. I don't typically go that route and I don't imagine you will at the beginning either. Instead, what you can do is you can just choose to download it. Choose the format, the graphic format that you want to download it in and then you simply download the graphic. And it, you have to be careful though, if you have multiple graphics in, an, in a file, it's going to create a compressed file with all of the graphics in it, and you're going to have a, a folder that you have to decompress once you've downloaded it. Or you can just select the exact image that you want to download, whichever image you want. You can save it, and it will be brought down to your download folder. You can name it, and now you can start to use it in whatever social platform you like. Creating custom graphics from the templates in Canva is... Uh, it's just, it, it's, it's something everybody who has to create any graphics at all in the entire world should know about. And as you can see it, it's not going to take you long to master this process. In fact, I suspect that you will really enjoy this process and you'll spend more time crafting and working with your graphics because it's not like you're starting from scratch and you're way behind the eight ball. 
you've already got a good graphic to work with and it's a pleasure tweaking a graphic and personalizing it for yourself as opposed to creating one from scratch. The template driven aspect of Canva is a godsend to those of us who are graphically challenged. And with that, I have to thank you for spending time with us today. If you found this video entertaining, useful, uh, then a like, a share, and perhaps a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Now, before we leave, one last thought. Every week here at Dottotech, we host a tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday. Ironically enough, they are every Wednesday. They're free. We cover a variety of different aspects of productivity and content creation. And if you enjoyed this video, I suspect that you would love to join us for one of our free Webinar Wednesdays. The link is here. I would look forward to seeing you there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.